Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. PLO Lumumba is telling the president that he is dealing with impatient population. And within no time, the reality will catch up with him in form of a revolution. And as that happens, the Kenyans living in the United States of America are also sending a chilling message to Kenya Kwanzaa administration over the regard impeachment. Make sure you watch to the end. But on my left side is Juliet. I promised you that Juliet was going to be in Nairobi today. So she's just going to highlight the plight. And uh, as I mentioned that uh, I really wanted us to come through and support her. Because Juliet, how are you? I'm fine. Uka salama, eh? Uka salama. Now, you, I was told your case that you're supposed to go to school on 27th of August. What happened? Kitu ili nifanyika. Babangu hakuwa na pesa. Awana kazi ya kufanya ni wakulima tu wakawahida. Na kwa hizo siku ambazo nikuwa na fao kujoin August 27th. By the course of the two weeks before that date. Mhm. Sistangu alikufa Na sasa everything changed Tukaanza kuplan about the mazishi Na sasa Tukimaliza wenye wali mpromise Watanipeleka shule wali sema Tushia kusaidia kwa Mazishi ya wezi kunisaidia kwa Ni kujoin kwangu So tukasema Iyo isha pita hivyo Sasa wezi kuenda shule mpaka Siku yenye mungu atajua Sasa Mimi ni kiambiwa, oh now he's taken me to Kiswahili. Yule mba li niambia isho yake ni basa wao, Nicholas Ogala, mbao is our subscriber here. So Nicholas li niambia kwa mba alikutafuta, akiwa kwa mba niambia kwa mba uliku umepita na hauko nisho uliku umepata great game. Be plain. Wow, congratulations. Guys, be plain. Na alifuwa nda fanya agricultural engineering. Wow. So, um, Um, Juliet alifa kujoin Muranga University kufanya agricultural engineering. Lakini kawa kwamba haikuwa inawezekana na umedhibitisha kwamba unafaa. Niliambiwa kwamba ikiwezekana na ufaa wende on Tuesday. Yeah, on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Mm. Yeah, so guys, that is it. Um, anafaa a join on Tuesday. And uh, the hostel you didn't get. Mm. That's Zilisha. what we confirmed. It's Elisha. So nyumba ile nyumba they mentioned is around 5000 yeah. and is a issue. Mm -hmm. So apart from the house the, our plan is if you get the house that house that goes at 5000 here ndiko karibu na university eh? mm -hmm. for first year lazima uishi karibu na university. Mm -hmm. Now so we are going to we are looking for around 50000 number one, to pay 10 months for that house kwa sababu atakuwa anaanza kuishi nje. We believe that by that time pia other factors shall have played come into play and hata nimeuliza wale ambao wako hapa kwamba you can also sponsor Juliet i believe it will going to be it's also going to be very possible then apart from that ile bandu mweko wanataka 20000 for fees yeah, 20000 so what we need is the 50000 at least to pay 10 months rent for Juliet you're going to pay 20000 for the band your fees you've applied the others yeah scholarship the, yeah yeah na help help Scholarship na scholarship pekeake. Oh, na scholarship pekeake. So after that, he's in a band where I think 20,000 is what is needed. Then what else will remain is any requirements and maybe some pocket money. Yes. Now, one one thing I've assessed is if you can be able to get 100,000 for Juliet on Tuesday. Lazima hende shule. Today is Sunday. Guys, between today's Sunday and Monday, we need 100,000. Oh. Jesus to live near 200 and a little dark. I mentioned about Juliet's case on uh, in the video I did last night on Sunday night and I'm talking I have 3325. So, yeah, 3325. So, I need 96,000. <laughs> Guys, let's do 100 bob challenge. Yes. For Juliet so that Tumpeleke Shule on Tuesday. I believe that by that day, you and the second impeachment, we shall still drive you to Muranga and follow impeachment from the beautiful county of Muranga. Na tunamini kwamba itazakana Juliet. Itazakana. 
atawezekana. Yes. So promises tukikupeleka shule uta hautaenda kucheza huko. I'll be hard working. Nikikumbuka penye nimetoka. Wow wow wow. You, you are in your family. Uh, now thank you. Let's also do our best guys. I wanted you to know because I mentioned that Juliet will be coming here. Atakuwa anakuja hapa Nairobi. Then we shall stay with Juliet for today and tomorrow. Then Juliet will be going to Moranga on Tuesday. So tutampeleka shule on Tuesday. Ku make sure kwamba ameweza kujoin as we now do other processes. Now thank you and all the best. Let me also Asante. tell them wa kutolea pesa tu tupeleke on Tuesday, si ndio? Sasa Asante. Ah Asante. I want us to listen to uh, Lumumba and I, I had mentioned that I wanted Julia to come here to Mwone and tatupatia uh, result slip in my next video I'm going to show you the result slip alipata B plane by the way I've seen alipata B plane it's supposed to do agricultural engineering education is an equalizer and last month we took another student by the way we took someone to Kirinyaga a uh, university he was also doing agricultural something on engineering course and I remember uh, tukinunua zile vitu zilikuwa zinatakana mingi sana but after that she, he also got a sponsor who sponsored him and we are really happy so i believe ata juliet tutampeleka tulipe hizi then the others we need one sponsor mwenye ataendelea kum sponsor from there now let's listen to plo lumumba uh, one of the voices in this society why should you be banding in students into band 1 band b band whatever it is all students ought to be treated in a manner that they are in other parts of the world and that is give loans to those who deserve it give bursaries to those who deserve it and this should be done in a manner that is implementable mm. yeah and if you go to the health sector one of the questions is why are we migrating into the new system why must we always be changing things how does a country build a system yeah. if you go to the scandinavian countries which we can learn from in the health sector you have a sector that is improved every other time if there was a problem with the nhif explain to us how it is being implemented this opaque approach of doing things which ends up into a scandal is something that does annoy and once again mm. people should just say we are not going to pay into that system and people can create alternative systems there have been countries where there are tax boycotts and if that is done i remember at one time the langata karen association went to court and said we are not going to pay our rates mm -hmm. to the nairobi city council at that time and they were granted orders and they used that money to improve their environment yeah. i think that that should happen if you go into the area of taxation look at the usurious tax kenya is one of the countries where banks make tons mm. of millions of money if you are business person who betide you if you go into the bank and take a loan so there are things that people can do yep. i know there are quite a number of organizations which talk about these things i know there are public spirited individuals who do these things but we are too much spectators we expect some people to be the warriors in the arena while we watch and spectate we must be engaged mm. that is what happens civic engagement and is something that we have seen consistently in different countries and it can make governments change their stances the countries that we see which have progressed to the level that of which you give examples of at whatever level that you want to see there was revolution that took place whether there was a revolution of ideas or there was a revolution of actual brick and mortar behavior action that took place if you actually want to see change if you want to see that governance and leadership is carried out in a proper way that development happens void of things like corruption at least to a certain level does revolution need to take place you know we are headed in that direction Let, mm. let's not bit bit about the bush if we are not careful and be wary of the fury of a patient population Mm. when you least expect it something can ignite the population in a manner that was never expected i'm one who believes that we should exhaust all systems all methods of having peaceful change but if peaceful change is impossible let me tell you mm. 
Revolution is the language of the unheard. Mm -hmm. And it can happen. Let us not <coughs> cheat ourselves that this country is immune. I was intimately involved in the attempt at making peace in the year 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. and but for the intervention of the international community, this country was descending into civil war. Mm -hmm. And once again, and I, I traveled this country, I traveled in this in former settlements in this city the anger is palpable you take a taxi you take a border border and they want to have a conversation everybody with wants you. to talk about and they it. are telling you we are angry what can we do yeah and somehow if you look at our parliament which is neutered it speaks not about any of these things they are going to spend millions of shillings now in the process of impeachment of the deputy president mm. going around the country to ask us whether the deputy president is guilty or not guilty who among them is without sin mm. the sins that they are accusing the deputy president of each one of them almost without exception i would have wanted my parliament to discuss the economic situation I would have wanted to hear my parliamentarians talking about the lack of salaries or proper remuneration for different cadres of the society. I do not hear that. Mm -hmm. Instead, they are defending, uh, they are fighting about uh, uh, the constituency development fund, which I don't think they should manage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not their duty. And when you walk around Nairobi or any part of the country, you see the poster of a member of parliament yeah. Yeah. constructed courtesy of this parliament that is our tax money should not bear the image of an individual mm. it is sad my sister mm. it is sad eric that we are in this space but i can guarantee you if it is not in our lifetime if this continues this country is going to pay and that could be the revolution mm. that will change things that if we are not careful, it could become worse before it becomes better. And I said in my last letter, the first letter in 2023 to Mr. Dinka and the president, then I told, I told them, let us paddle this water while it is knee deep. Mm. Because when it gets to our necks, we will sink, all of us. Yeah. Mm. All of us. Mtego wapanya, uingia waliomo, do you think they get it? Because the same way you go around the country, it's the same way these political leaders, especially the top political leaders, if you talk about William Ruto, Raila Odinga, uh, Musali Mudavari, Kalonzo Busyoka, they have traversed this country. They have engaged with people, different socioeconomic backgrounds, different. They have listened and talked to people. Is it possible that they don't get the message? I sometimes I think they don't get it, and if they get it, they don't care. But remember, your typical Kenyan politician prepares the ground before they go there, and preparation mm. of the ground means that you send advance parties with mm. the small denominations of Kenyan currency, and you ensure that the ground is softened in that way, and properly choreographed. And you have your goons who shut down any individual who holds a contrary view. Mm. And because of that, quite a number of them are shielded from the reality. But yet, there is so much noise being made in the Kenyan environment that they must know that people are angry. They and must be they, hearing something. If, if yeah. they ever doubted it, the dramatization of this anger by the young people in the month of July must and should have sent a chilling message. Mm. And for the first time, you could see even the head of state did not leave the country. Mm. Mm. The head of state sent the finance bill. The parliamentarians were scared. The cabinet ministers were no longer flying their flags. Yeah. They they got it but somehow memories are short and selective that is why we must keep on reminding them but as i said a little earlier when a country is hurtling towards its destruction even when god reasons with the leaders they think god mad mm. i fear that we may be in such a state we have fear there are politicians in this country who think they are larger than life, almost as large as death. <laughs> and that is part of our problem. They are insensitive 
even when the truth sits on their laps. Now, Lumumba is saying that um, the president is dealing with a very, very disturbed population. And if he's not careful about that population, then uh, it's going to rupture into revolution. The events of July and June 2024 should still remain vivid in the minds of the political players in this country. And you know that even the way Kenyans have interacted with the, uh, with the, with the impeachment of the deputy president during the public participation, still t t say, saying that even though there is peace, even though there is some silence, people are quiet, but people are silently hurting. And when they get slightest opportunity to show aggression towards the government, I think those in power must really take caution because things are not as straight as maybe they're opting now. I have also seen um, diaspora community, Kenyans living in diaspora, have also issued some statement, just this, um, <clears throat> have also issued some statement, and I want us to listen to that when they were reacting towards that impeachment. It's us again, the 14th county, uh, that helped you very well during the campaign. You remember the relationship that we created uh, three years ago uh, as a diaspora here and uh, you came and visited us like four or four, five times. We held multiple meetings uh, during your campaigns and we supported you financially, emotionally and we even some of them they came and voted in Kenya, others they voted here. But the reason we're here today is because we want to discuss the impending uh, issue that is happening there for the impeachment of the deputy president, which we don't support. We don't support, and this team doesn't support that. So uh, the other day, uh, Mr. Tangra, who's the Speaker of the House, he talked about the participation of the 47 counties. As we seven forty-eight counties, which you promised us that we will be included in every decision that is being made, because we participate a lot, we send a lot of money, Mr. President. And this about that, uh, this team here, I brought a team of uh, 500 people from diaspora. Bringing a team of 500 people from diaspora is not like getting 5,000 people from Kampuji and bring them to a place. Uh, people living in different states, different countries, so bringing those people in the uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, Mr. President, we are not happy with the things that are happening in the country. We are not happy with the, uh, the impending issues of impeachment. We are not happy with the corruption things that are happening and done and all that stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, we have the 48 constituents, the diaspora constituency. We exist. We exist and our voice matters. And that is why we feel the need to weigh on uh, the impending motion on the impeachment of the deputy president. As diaspora community, we feel this is not about just impeaching uh, the deputy president. There is more to it than this. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, you campaigned on a mantra of the bottom up. This is not bottom up. This is more about political infidelity, where you are inviting us to come and help you out the deputy president. We as the diaspora, we say, no. it is out, you are out. You both went into the barrel on the same foot. You've been gracious to invite us in today's uh, public participation for the impeachment. We were never invited public participation for the finance bill. We have greater issues, greater issues to address than the impeachment of the uh, deputy president. This is all about power play games. Your minds are not adding up. You are just disturbing the constituents to help you to add in your mats to whatever numbers you want. Asante sana. Mtuku Fries, tuko na mambu mengi tunaiza wangia. Lakini tunakuomba, kuna kritu mtu wanaangalenga ndani ya dunia, ile meaka huko nae, wewe ni mzazi, na wewe ni buwana ya familia, na umetoka upo fulani. Mimi ni mzalua wa idol kwa singisho. Sasa na uliza wewe, Hata kama ni nini, kweli kabisa, hii kazi vila unafanya sisi ya tutaki kukwambili wa tutanya kazi hapa. Lakini unafanya hii tamaa ilifika wapi. Yani unataka letea watu yote ya baringo, watu yote ya kaiyo, yani watu yote ya wakaye vila kutuwe wa mtaka. Mambo ya hene chaeo, mambo ya ikubalisha hii mambo ya adani, hii mambo hiko na hibu sana takodani. Mina omba, 
hata afadhali ufikirie kama ni advisor uangalie ile watu watakusaidia because kazi imefanyika mingi ndani ya Kenya hizi kazi ya kwanza wewe unafanya na vitu na kulingana hata kuna mtu anaona ile vitu ilifanywa na nani sasa wewe ile kitu unaguza na mkono yako inawacha shida hii ni KCC uliguza ma corporation yote simiti kila kitu yote umepeleka mimi umepeleka sasa hii mambo ya adani na wengi unakuja kutuwekelea alafu unacheza hii game ya gashagwa game ya raila game sibia nani game ya nani sasa hii mambo iko na aibu tafadhali vitu vingine sisi hatutakueleza lakini dunia imefika pahali tunaishi group village ambaye kila kitu unafanya inaonekana vitu hata wale wanapeana contract kwa fee mtu wanawacha ma trademark na kinaingana fulani aliulua na fulani na fulani sasa hii ni nini sasa hii ndio wewe utaondoka siku ile mungu atakusaidia kutoka hii dunia lakini ile aibu utawacha nyuma na ukoo yote wa kalenjini tutaenda kujificha watu juu ya wewe hii ni aibu 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 so hata kama tunasema kufa makanga kufa nini hiyo hiyo ni yako sasa utabeba wewe mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Dr. Sadi Koske alifika wakati mtukufu rais alikuwa amekataa kutoka waketi. Aliuliza angalia ground hiyo na gani. Dr. Sadi Koske alisema wakati mtukufu rais vitu vitu vimechange. Hata saa hii tunakueleza temperature ime change. Hii sisi tunaongea ni dunia nzima. Hii sio soko ya GNC tunaongea. Hao wamekusukuma na bora utasukumwa tu pole pole. Aibu aibu. Ndio maana tunasema nini? Kufa dereva, kufa mkanga. Kufa dereva, kufa mkanga. Ruto must go. Ruto must Go. If Kashagwa is going, Ruto, Ruto must go. go. Yes. Okay, to the to our MPs. That go in like Kolembi, this is my my governor here for everybody to understand. For some they are not being in the impeachment. So, go in like Kolembi. Na nyo do wa mau mwana mai kalete. To haha go kwa America. Na na member to the game come for me. Ito na maraka mai dinu do mai pi mai to. 281. Ana mai kalete de mara duguda dudu yako duta. Mwalimu wa wa president yetu ni Yes, hiyo ni unatimia kwa mambo mengine, ni ndio kwa mambo mengine. The 40 million you are embarrassing the whole world. Everybody make a mambo leo tunamureka. Instead of instead of tumtegea mtu to go ya president, anataka kuingia agenda zile yake. Hiyo ni mwana mure tea down. Na kwa gira mtongoria mwalimu wa president yetu hiyo, ado is hiyo mureka, oko ni mambo mengine ndio yani. He agia go to meeting na hiyo mambo ya mure. Ni kimulika to mambo ya tukuru abigira matita dukuru and they are waiting for the same position otherwise marisa mwende to the kuki mtu yake na lady so the, the minimum time is which is left mtu ndiye president na katuo kuna sangu arathie mudi mwa meeting ya mwisho shianyu ndio mwa hote poeto bia shigana whatever no muri party kana mtu ndiye ya ramara kwa gisha gi na mata mtu wodi dialysis yes thank you so much na mtu shona wete mono 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 yeah thank you and what we- Things are falling apart. Things are falling apart, apart very fast, thick and thin. I want us to read what Ahmed Nasir have written. It's a very long tweet, but it's worth reading so that you get to hear when I'm telling you that things are really really falling apart. Ahmed Nasir is saying, I signed the petition to remove the DP Rigadige Shagwa as the deputy president as but the petition table, tabled in parliament of the 11 grounds the most potent and powerful for me is that that accuse him of making 5.2 billion within 24 months corruption on that scale for a poor third world country like kenya is a war crime unforgivable but again isn't that hypocritical in the context of uda government he's asking Look at the Uda government. Cabinet secretaries who were wallowing in abject misery and poverty a few months ago, in the words of former Bahati MP Kimani Ngunjiri, some of the new billionaires has only two underwears and when their wives wash one, they had to wear the only spare underwear they had and then wait for the spare to dry. Have suddenly turned into billionaires. State corporations heads are looting corporations they had savagely and giving 50% of their CSS boss a protection fee. Governors have converted counties to family owned businesses. Judges have scaled up their bribes fees to an affordable scales, making jurispesa the norm in our courts. Yet President Ruto targets only Gashagwa for removal. 
That is why many Kenyans are rightly dismissive of Gashagwa's impeachment. If the deputy president is being impeached for corruption, how can President Ruto's cabinet continue in office? Isn't it he dismisses his entire cabinet and reconstitutes it afresh? Even a second time, he will bring back 90% of the same thieves he has just dismissed. Isn't 90% of President Ruto's cabinet crooks and robbers? Remember, the confession many made on oath that they made cool 200 million to 300 million in the two years they were in office while working as cabinet secretaries. Madness. If President Ruto wants to be taken seriously, and I'm not sure he wants or does, and his decision, his decision to impeach the, the Shagwa validated, he must start pogrom. That slays and cleans his government corruption today and clear the shit in his government. If he refuses to do so, highly likely he will not, then the people will do for him 2027 in Shala. The must go, but so do Ruto's cabinet secretaries, parastatal heads, judges, especially CJ Kome, and Supreme Court judges. Governors, the list is long. Mr. President, after the riots of June and July, Gashagwa's impeachment gives President Ruto a second chance to recast and reinvent his government. This sentiment has been echoed by many political observers that have been telling the president that he must come out clearly and show intention to clear the house and be intentional about everything. Why Ruto is bringing, and, and I want to explain why the new trend is Ruto is bringing revolution against his own regime and is the making of that revolution. I look at an array of four factors in this manner. The political class is disconnected with the population. Even as we speak now, the country is telling the MPs and the executive that while impeaching Regadi Geshagwa is of importance to you, but it is not a priority of the country now. The population is saying, we are more worried about a Dani takeover of JKA. We are more worried about the education funding model that is not working. And we are more worried about the transition from NHIF to SHA that has rendered health services in medical facilities irreparable, um, have rendered them um, 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 uh, unbearable. So patients are being chased from facilities and being asked to pay thousands of shillings from their pockets because those facilities cannot admit, do not have contracts, valid contracts with SHA. And so they cannot treat those patients. Now, that transition has been chaotic and it is mad with a lot of challenges. But the political class is disconnected. That is one of the factors that are emerging. Number two, I think the presidency, and to be specific, the presidency is aggravating the political emotions by antago antagonizing the voters. I am seeing, I saw video clips from Rift Valley and Central Kenya. The two large voting blocks for Kenya Kwanzaa say in unison that we don't want regarding impeachment, Kufa Dereva, Kufa Makanga. And in very clear terms, what they are saying is that the president and the deputy have to leave if someone is supposed to leave. Corruption is hurting the population. And I think the earlier the political class understands this, the better, so that they do not fall in the trap of tone deaf. Remember that been, uh, one, one of the things that the president has faced is that he is tone deaf. He's failed to click it. He's failed to explain to the people about how to fight corruption. And the reason why revolution is in the offing is the people are hopeless. The system only working for the rich. When you look at the new chaos, the chaos in the education funding model, now we are just fundraising to support our, um, uh, our Juliet to go to Muranga University. That funding model is not working for the likes of Juliet, but is really working for the airlines, the people that have a lot of money in this country. Now, you are also going not to see billionaires and the political class 
lining up and crying out for the insurance scheme because they have private insurance, medical cover by government that can make them rush to any private facility near them. But the population cannot get the services. Even um, as the political class talks stuff about what they need to do. So regarding impeachment presents an opportunity and I keep on saying and I will not get tired of repeating in this board. The impeachment must be based, it must be based on principle. But when it is based on political vendetta, then the public, it loses the public trust. And that is why if you successfully impeach regarding on those criminal charges, then we need to ask ourselves how many cabinet secretaries, how many companies that does the president himself have, the speaker of the National Assembly and the members of parliament. No one should be above the law. And the unit of protection, why politicians are getting protection from prosecution, need to be scrapped. So that is a lifetime audit is done, we clean the system. Otherwise, regarding impeachment is not going to appease the population. As they are really speaking, they are not saying the government should not be impeached. But they are saying the government should be impeached by the president. In fact, one thing I realize, people want to get, people really support to get the impeachment. But when that impeachment is packaged to expose or rather to project William Ruto as a saint, that is where they cross the line. We impeach the Gadi, but does not mean that the person we are supporting, that, uh, that we are supporting Ruto. Because at the end of the day, even Ruto is part of that kahoot. Thank you guys. Let's support Juliet Skitty. Uh, we are taking her on Tuesday. So we have Sunday and Monday. Mm -hmm. on Tuesday. May God bless you.